G'day and welcome to another video with Better Picks. Hope this finds everyone well. What? There have been some major changes with Adobe Camera Raw, Lightroom Classic and Lightroom. And I think they'll be very welcome changes that are going to help people with their workflows. The power of AI to help with removing objects from your images. And uh, I think this is going to be, as I mentioned, a very welcome feature for these platforms. Let's have a look at some images and get into unpacking what the tool is, how it works, and what it can do for you. You can see I've got four images open within Adobe Camera Raw. Now, these are all JPEGs, but uh, for demonstration purposes, these are the images that we're going to be using today. Uh, there won't be any other edits applied to these images because they have already been uh, edited and exported as full resolution JPEGs. So if we have a look over on the right hand side where all of our tools are, the third one down below edit and crop, there's a little eraser symbol there. And you can see when you select that eraser tool, it has remove. Uh, it still has early access there, but you can see the option there to use generative AI uh, and obviously object aware as well. So with that tool selected, what I'm going to do is just remove this person in the background uh, so that they're, it's a little bit less distractive for the main surfer that's on the wave at this time. So with all of that selected, you can see you can change the size of the tool and the opacity. I'm going to keep the opacity at 100. And the size, let's go around 20. I think that'll work well. And we're just going to paint over that person. And you can see it's selected a mask. Uh, what you can also see on the right hand side here is that you have the option to add or subtract uh, the mask. So again, with the option to adjust the size of the tool. Uh, I'm pretty happy with where that selection is at the moment. So we're just going to hit apply. And you can see that's done a great job of removing that person. Now what you will notice is that uh, there is still a little bit of turbulent water there that's as a result of the person being there. So you can actually go back and reapply that generative AI remove and see if you can clean up that water. Before we do that though, I just want to draw your attention over on the right hand side. Very similar to Photoshop, you do have variations. So one two and three so it's just different variations of that remove functionality and if you're not happy with any of those three options you can hit refresh and it will go through the process of regenerating new options for you to review and choose one hopefully that works now keeping in mind for this particular image you can see there's a lot of information, there's a lot of texture in the water around where we want to uh, remove that person from the wave and uh, it's going to generally work pretty well. I mean that option right there or that uh, result right there is pretty good on the scale of things. Let's have a look at a few different options. I'm going to go back to number one and we're actually going to just paint over it again but we're going to take a larger selection and see what results we get. You can see that's created a much better version. There's really no evidence there if we cycle through the different options that there was ever a person there to begin with. The wave looks as we would expect it to look with no disturbance from a surfer paddling through. Having a look at option two, I think that's pretty good. So that looks very natural and realistic. Fantastic outcome. If we have a look at the next image, you can see we've got uh, somebody walking down uh, this access way onto a beach. So what I'm going to do first is just zoom into 100%. And that way we're going to be able to make a very accurate selection of that person. So you can see I'm still going around the outside of them. Just giving it uh, as much to work with. But it's not a large tool on a small part of the screen. Um, all right, let's hit apply. And you can see the uh, status there of it working through, uploading to Adobe's cloud and making the adjustments that we need it to make. There we go. And straight out of the box, that's a really good result. Remembering once again that we do have three options that we can look at and all three are pretty good. I think I'm going to go with the third one there. So great outcome. All right, let's have a look at this one. This image I photographed in the Everest region of Nepal. And while I think the person appearing in the frame in the bottom right hand corner gives great context to the scale of the landscape, I'm still just for demonstration purposes going to go through the process of removal of that person. So again, 
I'm just going to zoom in a little bit just so I have better access to that person. And this time I'm going to also make sure that I include their shadow, which wasn't actually evident in the other image examples that we used. And of course their tracking poles as well, just making sure that we include all parts of the image that we want to have updated. All right, so you can see this is a great example uh, where the refine tool is going to be very useful. You can see that it's selected all of the person and the majority of the tracking poles, but we've just got a section down here that it's missed, and it's also left out uh, a couple of sections of the polar pole over on the right hand side, as well as their shadow. So I'm just going to simply by having add selected, paint over those extra sections and hit apply and see how we go. Once again, straight out of the bat, that's a really good result. And we're just gonna have a look at the other two options that it gives us. They're also all pretty good as well. Um, let's have a look. Look, I'm gonna go with number three, I think, but I, I really think all three of those options are, are definitely gonna work well. Uh, so no complaints with the results there at all. If we go back out to the full image, you can see it's as if that person was never there, which if that's the result you're going for, that's a good outcome. All right, last image is an image that I photographed over Central Australia, just north of Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. Uh, and it's an aerial image, it was shot with a drone, and you can see we've just got a road at the bottom part of the image there with a car on the road. Um, and what I'm gonna do, I really like the car in this image, but I'm just gonna, for, again, for the sake of uh, demonstration, we're just gonna come in on that car, select our remove tool, making sure, of course, use generative AI and object aware is selected. And I'm gonna select all of the car as well as the shadow. And you can see in this case, it has indeed selected uh, all of the car and the shadow. Let's have a look at how this uh, goes for this one. There we go. And, and again, the result straight out of the bag is pretty good. Let's have a look at the other options. Excellent. All right. I think actually option two and three are a little bit better. The texture of the ground uh, adjacent to the road as well as on the road itself just seems a little bit more realistic. And yeah, let's go for number two, I think. So that's a great outcome for those four images. Let's go back to full screen and we'll just quickly review them again. I always like to come back to images. This is something that I mention in my videos quite regularly. Just to, I guess, uh, break my attention to a particular image and then re-establish looking at that image just to see how the edits are going. And on the scale of things, I'm really happy with the results. Now, keeping in mind that these images, as I mentioned earlier, are really good options to use generative AI for because there's a lot of detail and information surrounding the objects that we wanted to remove uh, for the software or for the AI to be able to select from. So that's really, uh, I think, would attribute to the outcome, uh, but the outcome speaks for itself. Uh, there's definitely some good results there. All right, let's switch over to Lightroom Classic and we've got the same four images that have already been imported and we're in our develop module. And you can see just here underneath the histogram, we have the same edit, crop, and now remove tool, which the shortcut is Q. And if we click on that remove tool, you can see we've got exactly the same options that we did in Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, yep, I agree to that. And object aware. All right, let's have a look. I'm just gonna increase my tool to 20 again. Let's just zoom in on that person. Again, we're gonna select all of them. That's great. And let's apply. And it's going through that process of identifying everything it needs to identify. Excellent. All right, now if we just go out a little bit, you can see that because I only selected the surfer the same as last time, it's actually left some of these waves in there. So I'm going to go through and just make a bigger selection just to help to see if we can get that same or similar result 
that removes those waves or that chop in the water, that's evidence that there was something there. So it's a great tip there from Lightroom as well, or the the uh, software behind it for best results. Brush over the entire object and any shadow. All right, again, we have three options. Let's have a look. That looks pretty good. And let's have a look at the results. And look, I am super happy with that. I think uh, that's definitely realistic. It's uh, matched the water perfectly. Uh, there's obviously a graduation there of color and density and tonal values. And uh, it's very much um, looking good, I think. Now, I'm not going to go through and uh, demonstrate all of the same because the results, as we would expect, be would be the same uh, or very similar at least. But you at least can see within Lightroom Classic that under that uh, remove tool, shortcut Q, that there is the option to use generative AI now to remove objects within your images. Now, if we switch over to Lightroom, fantastic thing about Lightroom is that this tool is now available as well. And if we have a look over on the right hand side, this looks a little bit similar to Adobe Camera Raw. We have that remove tool, the shortcut is H. And we have the option for generative AI once again and object aware. The layout is very, very similar. Let's just go up to 20 and let's select that car and shadow again. Excellent. Well, it's actually selected that line in the middle of the road as well. So we're going to cancel that. Let's go in a little bit closer and let's just remove this, reduce, sorry, the size of our tool and just be a little bit more selective. There we go. That's much better. So it's selected the car and the shadow. And we're going to apply that. Excellent. And once again, we have the option of three versions. You can see it's uh, done a, little, a bit of an interesting one there by removing a section of the line. But I think number three is probably the best option out of all of them. There we go. Now, another thing that we're going to have a look at, you can see uh, with this image that uh, this tree has quite a large shadow stretching out across the landscape and across the road. So with it zoomed in, we're just going to see how it handles getting rid of that shadow. So once again, we'll go to that remove tool using the same size tool. Obviously you can adjust it if need be. And we're just we're not going to select the tree, but we're just going to select the shadow that's coming from the tree. Now you could argue that um, the tree is there, therefore there should be a shadow and it won't look realistic with uh, out of shadow there. Uh, so you could go and remove the entire tree itself, but for this one, we're just going to get rid of the shadow, see what it does. All right, and that result is pretty darn good. Let's have a look at a few different options. It's actually for this one, just created a small shadow there to help with that realism that I was talking about earlier. Yep, that looks good, that looks good. I think two and three are definitely good options. Three gives a little bit more texture in the road, which seems to match the other parts of the road. And that small shadow there just seems to help with that realism around there needing to be or expecting to see some shadow coming off that tree. So overall, I think that's a great result. Uh, and definitely a realistic result that uh, you would expect to be happy with, even if you were looking at this with fairly fine detail. So fantastic update from Adobe, available in Adobe Camera Raw, Lightroom Classic and Lightroom, with generative AI remove now available across all three platforms. And as these three platforms basically form the core process of uh, editing and uh, saving uh, raw images in your edit workflow, it means that you no longer have to go into Photoshop to use that exact tool, which absolutely, for anyone processing a large number of images, will save them time. But particularly for people working in a professional context where the process of editing images can take a long time, Anything that improves workflow efficiency is to be applauded. And I think Adobe has definitely got it right this time. And uh, there'll be a lot of happy people uh, with this tool now available in those platforms. 
Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button if you have found it helpful. And uh, as always, any questions are welcome in the comments below. Thanks for stopping by and take care.